Welcome back to the Old Iron Lover channel and my name is Bob. Today we're going to take a look at a couple of cool tools in uh, number two in our series called Cool Tools and Interesting Stuff. I guess interesting stuff is in the eyes of the beholder but hopefully some of you behold something kind of interesting here. Uh, we're going to look at uh, a Stuart Warner manual tachometer. It has uh, quite a few uses with old iron. And uh, we're going to look at a uh, finishing system for polishing steel or brass or whatever. Um, I just got this the other day and I, I kind of experimented a little bit with it, but I uh, want to take a piece of steel and see if we can polish it up real nice and uh, see how it turns out. So I'm going to move you over to uh, the lathe and we'll take a look at, uh, at what's going on there. Okay, we're back at the lathe today. And uh, first thing we're going to take a look at is a, uh, a vintage Stuart Warner tachometer. And these have been around for quite a while. Uh, I can remember them when I was in my 20s probably, maybe before that. They come in a, an iconic yellow can with, a, I believe it was a red lid on top of it. This one came without the lid, so I bought it off of eBay used. Uh, anyway, inside of it, is a portable hand tachometer and it reads uh, up to 4,000 rpm in either direction has a little rubber button on the back I imagine it was shaped a little differently at some point in time this is a contact uh, uh, tachometer so you just put it in contact with whatever you want to take a look at and uh, it reads out directly Okay, so one of the things I've wanted to do for a long time, just never got around to it, and well, today's the day. I want to find out what the actual spindle speeds are for my uh, South Bend lathe. This is a South Bend 13 inch uh, from the late, early 1950s, about a 54 model. And it's got uh, four different positions that the drive belt can be in. Uh, and none of them are terribly fast, but you know, I, it is what we have. So anyway, uh, let's turn this thing on and see what we have in the way of speeds. About 350 RPM. make up some kind of little sticker to put on there to remind me what these speeds are. <clears throat> I'm going to go back to the second one now. I, uh, I think I misread each of the little uh, tick marks on there. The, the, big, the big marks is uh, 20, 200 RPM and each of the little tick marks on the outside is uh, 100 RPM or the, the odd numbered RPMs. So here we go again on the second one. So we're looking at about 510 RPM, so that's, I had it right. We'll move up to the third notch. I see about 800 RPM, We're close to 800 straight on. seeing about 1200 RPM. So that'll, uh, that'll be kind of nice. And like I say, I don't know how long these have been around. 
uh, but it's been quite a while. And I don't see any indication on the box that would tell me anything about the date or anything. But the, uh, the other thing that I use these for, and it's not, not a lot because I don't build a lot of old engines, but uh, in restoring antique engines, uh, you can use those to set the governor on them. And uh, one of my engines has a governor speed of 500 RPM or 550, I can't remember. And um, you can set your governor there. Most of the guys that do old antique engines, uh, the hit and miss engines, like to hear them pop and then coast a while and then pop. And it, you get a better effect if you tune them real low. So we wind up set, setting them lower than the actual governed, the, the factory governed RPM. But at least you know how fast it's turning. Now, um, I've got a, just a piece of steel out of a, uh, probably a piece of farm equipment. And I, I turned it with uh, a CNMG uh, uh, carbide insert. And then I came back with a file and I filed it and then I put uh, some emery cloth on it. And each step I went further out the, on the end of this thing and I got a polish on the end of it. Still not as, as perfect as I'd like to be, but I did learn a few things and probably obvious things, but um, when we're, the, the kit I'm going to show you here is this here. It's the MicroMesh uh, Metal Finishing Kit. And so there it is, the Metal Finishing Kit MX90. And inside the kit is a kind of a firm foam block. Uh, sheets. 100 and now they're they're mesh and I'll put a graphic up at the end of the video about the how they rate their their stuff um, 100 MX 120 150 180 240 320 360 400, 600, 800, and 1200. And I, I got to tell you, this just feels like a smooth piece of cloth. Uh, it's it supposedly gives you a three micron finish, and that's a total of one, two, three, four. Come on, loose there. Five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So eleven different grits here. Also in the package are some sticks, and they are hard to read here. But there's a, two different coarse ones here. There's a one eighty, a two forty, a four hundred, and a six hundred for you know reaching into a small place. They're a little flexible, but they have a fairly stiff backing in them. So anyway, uh, playing around with this earlier, by the way, this kit, I think, costs about 45 bucks or so. Uh, it, it occurred to me that as we're polishing these things, if we don't get in a hurry, um, what, what I really recommend is as you're starting out with the coarser grit, and I'll start out with like a 320 uh, emery cloth, um, and, and I, may, I may even start out with a 150 emery cloth. You, I think you want to take that cloth or whatever grit you're, you're uh, polishing with as far as it will go before you go to the next grit. Otherwise, you're going to have some, you know, maybe some scratches and things in there that you could have got out with the with the 150 that now you're trying to you know work it to death getting it out with a with a 320. I will tell you that the grits on these papers do not correspond with the grits on a piece of emery cloth or something with sandpaper or whatever. Uh, there are different scales. And uh, again, I'll, I'll post a, there's a chart uh, that comes with the kit. I'll post that at the end of the video so you can see what, uh, uh, what they, how they compare. Um, just uh, 
so you know I don't have any interest in the company I don't get any freebies out of them or any of that kind of stuff I'm just trying the product out I, I think it was actually mentioned by um, Chuck uh, Balmerito uh, on his channel he, he had not this particular product but he had a different uh, micro mesh product and that got me looking into it so anyway I'm going to take this thing I've already kind of halfway finished and come back to it and, and uh, polish it, see how we can, how, how nice we can make it look. Uh, I don't have any particular use for the thing, but I want to, uh, I want to see how, uh, okay, got all my stuff together here. Start out, and I want to just hit this with a 150, and I'm probably not going to hit out here, uh, because I, I've already polished part of that, but Let's just see how it goes, and I think I will take it back down off of the highest speed. I think I'll put it on the second speed. Thought I missed that. There we go. Okay. Here's the 150. I'm actually seeing a couple little scratches there. I want to. I think I want to take them out with uh, a lathe file. Just bought these, by the way, at uh, uh, Dale Dairy had recommended them. A lathe file uh, has a safe side on each side, and the cuts, the teeth are, are cut at a 45 degree angle instead of a flatter angle like you'd find on a, a normal, what I would call a normal file. Um, the thing I like about these and my, my set is a big one and a little one. And the little one's uh, finer than the big one. But Anyway, um, what I like about this one is it's brand new and it's sharp. Most of my files are somewhere between kind of dull and kind of sharp. So I'm going to see if I can take out a few of these scratches that you probably can't see on the camera, but uh, I can, so they're coming out. Now I'm not trying to get it to any particular diameter. I'm just trying to get it smooth, just so we can shine it up. So here we go with a 150 grit. Okay, I don't see any scratches left in there that look like uh, they are coarser than the, the 150 grit. So we'll move up to the uh, 320 grit and then we'll start with the micro mesh stuff. Okay, uh, that looks real good. We got, there are still visible scratches, but the uh, the emery cloth has uh, done a nice job of getting this, you know, this started here. So the the rest of this I'm going to do uh, wet sanding. Let's just get my stuff located here. And put everything back in the box as I get through with it. So uh, here we go with the 100 grit or the 100 MX grit. And now, um, it might be more expeditious to get these done uh, by skipping a grit, but I don't know that. I don't have any information one way or the other to say whether that's a good idea. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just take each grit to, uh, I'll make 11 passes here, with one with each grit, and we'll, we'll get it to let each grit do what it can do before I move to the next one. <laughs>
think I'll hit that just another couple of times here. Okay, we'll move up to the 120. It's a little hard to tell between, between grits. They're fairly close together, so I don't know, again, if I should just be skipping them or not. So. The 180. And you don't have to push real hard with this. Uh, just, just a gentle pressure on it to keep it in good contact. But you don't need to bear down on it at all. Up to 320. Okay, we're going to 400 grit next. was the 400 MX grit and uh, we're, we're still to the point where we can still see the, the sanding marks on it just they're getting finer and finer uh, when we get up uh, we got three grits left to go the 600 800 and 1200 and uh, pretty soon they're going to get about the about the 6 or 800 level they stop really being obvious as far as the the little tiny scratches from previous level of sand. Okay, We're going to move up to the 800 grit and uh, we're getting close to finishing this project. Okay, this one here should be, we should be starting to find it hard to see the sanding lines now. I'm just wiping these off so I don't put them to gate, to put them away into the box, uh, just sopping wet. So here's the last grits, the 1200. We might stay on this grit for a while. I can still see a few minor scratches in it. It may be the result of me getting in a hurry and not getting it all at the previous levels and I'm taking out heavier scratches that should have been taken out at a different level. Well, it's still got a few scratches left in it that I probably should have caught at a higher grit but uh, it's starting to shine up pretty good. I'll show you what I got. I think what I would do if I were really trying to get this uh, polished up real nice would be to uh, go back with a, a 180MX or something like that and work on it some more. You can see some fine scratches it didn't take out. But on the end here where I've polished it quite a bit, it's you have to get the light just right to see any sanding marks. So, pretty nice finish. All in all, I, th I like the product and I think I'll use it again. I don't know when or for what, but when I want something to be real shiny and real polished looking, I'll probably use it. 
thanks for watching. If you like it, uh, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, well, give me a thumbs up anyway. And uh, beyond that, uh, subscribe. Uh, I always like to have more subscribers. Thank you. Bye.